how do I actually find comps for these properties so I can jump into it knowing, knowing what I'm getting myself into. Um, one practical thing you can do is extend the range for particularly, and you alluded to this, but particularly for during COVID, if you can extend it back 12 months, I personally, I think that's helpful because it gives you a, more data points to work with and it's all within that COVID craziness. All right, so it's going to be reasonably mm -hmm. the same. The, the inventory problem with COVID, the low inventory problem, is going to be the same throughout all of those 12 months. So now at least we've got 12 months of data to work with. So I would extend it there. The next thing is try and understand the best guess, essentially. So if you ask your property manager or your realtor and said, hey, how much do you think this would appraise for? In a normal environment, what do you think this would appraise for? And she says fifty to sixty thousand dollars. That's a reasonable range. I think it's it's fair to go with that. One other thing you can do is actually call an appraiser and talk to them because one of the challenges that appraisers have right now is they don't want to over appraise a house. Right? They're essentially they're saying what are the comparables around here? They're doing what we're doing. They do it a little bit more detailed though, but they're asking what are the comparables around here and what should this house appraise for? Then if it sells for more than that, that's, that's, not, that's not their deal, but they don't want to over appraise something because there's been two or three sales in the last six months that are way higher than normal. So they might split the middle just because they don't wanna, they don't wanna get in trouble. Whether that in trouble is from the company they work for or their governing agency, all right, the actual uh, appraisers organization that they have their certification, their license through. Um, but I, I would call an appraiser and say, hey, how are you appraising properties in this environment? If you really want to be super conservative, you can have an appraisal done on the front end. So before you get into the house, you do your home inspection, et cetera. If, you're, if your ARV is the one thing that's most volatile, you can send in an appraiser to have them appraise the property before rehab. What you've got to do is be able to send, and I think you sent over some questions in Slack to this regard so that you could provide pictures on the front end of what it's going to look like. You should describe to them and if you can send them pictures of what those properties are going to look like at the end so that they can get a good feel for what the ARV is going to be. But does that help? Does that help give you tactical next steps? Or yeah, have you yeah, even I been doing so. those things and still experiencing challenges? No, I, I haven't been doing some of those things. I, I am going to push my property manager to uh, extend her range to 12 months and just mm -hmm. see like what that gets us. It gets us more um, comps. Um, yeah. yeah, I hadn't thought about calling an appraiser. Uh, and yeah, that's interesting. They like they will just go in and do an appraisal, like an estimated appraisal on the front end, I guess, is what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And, and sometimes the bank will take those. Sometimes when you work with a hard money lender, if they're if they don't have a good understanding of the market, they will send in an appraiser on the front end. Okay. Yeah. So an appraisal like that, even though they're estimating and everything will probably run about the same as just an official appraisal at the end of a renovation. Yeah. yeah. The harder part for them is understanding the quality of the rehab that you're going to do. So the okay. better that you can give them insight to that, the more helpful it is. Great. Yeah. But I mean, I, if you look at it from your, your realtor or property manager standpoint, what I think probably what's going on in her mind is she doesn't want to screw you or she don't want to put you in a compromised position where she said, this is going to appraise in a normal environment for 80. And then it only appraises for 60. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of the risk evaluation that you've got to do. Let her give you her context, but then say in your best, most accurate professional opinion, what do you think that this would appraise at? Or what do you think that this house is worth? Mm -hmm. Because, and I, I really do think we're toward the tail end of this. Um, we're starting to see the economy open up a little bit more now. I mean, hopefully we don't have another wave or uh, additional variants, but, um, I want to say that we've, the United States has hit over 2 million, um, vaccines in one day or the amount of vaccines that we've already done. Some countries won't even get to that this calendar year. And so, I don't know how much more we need to get to herd immunity, but it seems like things are going to be slowly opening up over the course of time. So I'm hopeful for that. But again, you know, with a pandemic, you, you can't guarantee anything. Um, but yeah, I would take that information and say, well, how much do you think it's worth? Then give me the comps for the last 12 months 
And then you specifically, you can look at the sale dates and you can say, well, this one sold in January versus this one sold in December. So one's probably a little bit more um, uh, valuable or recent, but at the same time, if it's not an exact comp, it's not an exact comp. So you can kind of balance those things. It'll help you understand the range between when she says $60,000, are the comps anywhere between 40 and 80? Or are they anywhere between 58 and 62? It help, helps you understand the magnitude of difference that you're evaluating. Because that those are very different, right? If, if you think, well, it could be 40, it could be 80. That's probably, that's, that's a much riskier situation than saying it could be 58 or 62 right mm -hmm. yeah i had a uh, one other agent send me some comps on a, a property and on a single property she was able to find four comps within the past uh, six months mm -hmm. in a like quarter mile radius yeah. that varied from twenty two thousand to one hundred twenty one thousand mm -hmm. dollars and so yeah. it, was, it was such a wide range i didn't quite know how to uh, see i would it. in situations like that if you can get pictures that's way more valuable because those houses, um, if they really do vary that much between twenty-two and one hundred twenty thousand dollars, they're probably vastly different properties, mm -hmm. either in quality or where they're being bought. I'm, I'm guessing that's a wholesale a distressed property, the twenty-two thousand dollar property, because your market's still yeah. reasonably inexpensive. Um, it's you know you can get in on a house all in for forty thousand dollars, and it might appraise at sixty, is my understanding, but that wide of a gap makes me say those those two properties probably aren't as comparable as they might be thinking. Okay. And just so that you know, when you get that information, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for similar, probably the same beds and similar bath. So a 3-2, I would take a 4-2. I would take a 3-2, but I would not take a 2-2. Two -two. The distance between a 3 and a 2 bed is pretty pretty significant. Uh, the difference okay. between a four bed and a three bed, not really that different. Um, but a three, two, three, two and a half, maybe. So if they're off or three, one and a half, if they're off by like a half bath, I think that's fine. I'm also looking at square feet, right? If the house is 3,500 square feet and you're getting a comp for, and it's a three, two, and you're getting a comp for a three, one, that's 900 square feet, very different house, right? Also a uh, build date. Uh, not mission critical, but helpful. Like a 1950 build is more similar to a 1925 build than it is to a 2017 build. Uh, they're just not, they're just not going to be the same. So, but specifically I'm looking at bed and bath and I really want the beds to be the same. Similar area and then similar square footage. I'd say maybe within 20, 20% square foot. If possible, right. yeah. Okay.